Hey guys, how's it going? John here. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity. I recently got a new machine, new to me anyways. It's an old workstation, but um, it works for my purposes to um, create a dedicated um, machine for my ham radio setup. Um, if you've seen some of my videos in the past, you know that I'm really into ham radio. And um, I've traditionally had it hooked up to my main rig over there, but having to move between that machine over here and to adjust things on my radio um, has been kind of a pain in the butt, to be perfectly honest. And there's this place that sells these old um, workstations uh, near me for near dirt cheap. And so um, I figured um, I, would, I would get this machine. Anyways, I had a couple of extra hard drives laying around, two, three terabyte hard drives, and I wanted to throw them in this machine and create a RAID array um, so that I could back up stuff and whatnot for this machine. Anyways, um, I figured I would take this opportunity to show you guys how to create a RAID 1 array with ButterFS, um, talk about some of the advantages of ButterFS um, versus like EXT4. And so if you wanna just skip straight to me creating the RAID array, I'll put a timestamp here so that you can just click and go to that. Um, otherwise, let's talk about some of the advantages of ButterFS versus like EXT4. And so traditionally EXT4 has been a great file system. Um, honestly, it is so rock solid. Um, it what it does is absolutely incredible, and it's derivatives, you know, ext3 and ext2 before it, um, and so some of the things that it does really well actually is it's supported on many operating systems, and so let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see this better. Um, so. It has support on Windows and Mac OS, obviously not natively, but you can add it in there so that you, if you're trying to use like a portable drive or something like that, or just trying to open stuff up on one of those other operating systems, you absolutely can do it. ButterFS right now, not so much. Um, it's definitely still in its infancy when it comes to non-Linux operating systems. Um, but you can see some of the other advantages here. Obviously, it is a little bit more future proof. You know, I don't think we're going to hit the limits of EXT4 as like a desktop machine anytime soon. I don't know about you, but one exabyte of um, file size, um, or I should say partition size, is absolutely mammoth right now. Now, I say that in, you know, maybe 20 years in the future, that will be commonplace to have a one exabyte. Uh, file system, but right now it doesn't really make a lot of sense and obviously with ButterFS You're gonna have to be a little bit more future-proof Really one that I wanted to get down to is these two parts right here These are the things that really interest me the most and that's um, snapshots and raid support so That's really what separates the 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 big difference for me um, between ext4 and ButterFS so snapshots what does that mean? Basically, save points in your file system. So I'm running this machine on Fedora, and so Fedora natively supports ButterFS, and that's the default file system that it uses for its root partition. And so what you have the, the ability to do is to be able to create snapshots or moments in time so that you can go back and revert your operating system back to a previous state. So maybe you installed something or you screwed up a configuration and it just isn't working right anymore. You can always roll it back to that previous state and get it back into the state that you needed it in. Um, the same if you deleted a file or something like that, you can roll it back to that previous state in order to get to that file. The other thing, um, and thus the reason why I'm creating this video today, is RAID support. Um, EXT4 does not support RAID, and you need something like LVM or something like that to be able to create a RAID array. You can't do it natively with EXT4. And so that's why I'm choosing ButterFS um, for this video today. So let's go ahead and get into it um, and creating ButterFS um, RAID 1 array. So you can see here, I've got a script that I wrote um, that we're, is going to be able to help me follow along so that I don't forget my steps here um, in order to create this array. Now, I want to put this caveat in here first. 
um, what we are doing is going to destroy data. So if you have any information on the disks that you're trying to do this on, just know that that information will be gone. So please make sure that you have everything backed up on your system that is important to you. Um, we're also messing with the fstab file. That file is um, the file that we use in order to auto mount um, our file systems uh, on the boot process. And so it's important to know that if you screw up that file, you potentially could ruin the ability for your machine to boot correctly. And so just proceed with caution, make sure that you're backed up um, before you do these types of things or at least know what you're doing. Um, so with that um, big huge warning disclaimer out of the way, let's go ahead and start. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a directory for our um, file system where we're gonna mount it. And so um, I'm going to do this for slash data on the root um, for me personally. You could put this in any location you want. You could put it inside your home directory, whatever. Um, but for the purpose of this demonstration, this is where I wanna put mine. So this is where I'm gonna put it. So we're gonna create this directory slash data. And so we gotta put in our password. And so now we've created our directory here. Let me clear this out. Um, so the next thing that we wanna do is um, we need to run the, the list block command, lsblk. And so what this command is going to do is this lists all the disks that we have on our machine. So you can see um, my SDA, that SSD is where the, the root partition and my home directory, et cetera, are all created. So um, that's where the file or the operating system lives. Now. I have, you can see here, I've got three other disks. I've got SDB, SDC, and SDD. Now they're kind of out of order, um, but so the OCD people out there, this may drive them a little crazy, but so we've got a 2.7 terabyte, then I've got another SSD in here, and then another 2.7 terabyte um, hard drive. And so that's important to tell us what the locations are of our devices, because um, that's gonna be um, critical on this next step here. So if we copy this next command, um, this is going to give us um, our command for creating our RAID array. And so we wanna make sure that we put the right devices in here. And so I'm just gonna explain a little bit of what this command is doing. So we're using the makefs command, which makes our file systems. And you can see here that we're using the butterfs um, uh, file system for that um, partition. And so we're doing a label of data. Um, we're creating um, metadata and our configuration as, as RAID 1, essentially. So if we go ahead and press enter, you can see it created it. Now, one thing to notice here, our file system, it's gonna list it as the raw overall file size. So we've got 5.46 terabytes, even though our usable is only gonna be 2.73 because RAID 1 is a mirror. You've got two identical copies of the same data. So if one dot drive fails, um, you still have a complete copy of the backup or of the, the file system. And so you can go and rebuild it and put another drive in there to you know cre recreate the array. So now what we need to do, now that we have that created, um, we need to mount that array. So let's clear that out. And so here we go. So we need to go and we need to put in one of the devices that we used in order to create the array. So we could use um, SDB or SDD, but it doesn't really matter. Just need to use one of those. So we're gonna mount our file system to the data directory. So there we go. And so it should be mounted. So we're gonna use this next command and this is um, the display file system or DF command. And so you can see here, um, SDB is now a 2.8 terabyte, um, 2.8 terabyte um, file system, um, only 1% used obviously since we just created it and it's mounted on data. Now, the next thing that we can do is we can see a um, complete detailed listing of the the butterfs file system for that 
So if we click and we use this command here, it lists out and gives us all the specifics of that um, file system. So you can see here that the overall device size is 5.46, but the overall, you know, the free is 2.73. So that it's showing us how much um, space that we have available. And so that's pretty much the details of that file system. Now, what we also need to do now is we need to get some information about this file system. So one of the things, now this command is gonna be a mess and it's gonna be difficult to read, but um, one of the things we did is we created a data label so we'll be able to easily see the, the, the UUID that we're looking for. And so when we press this and run this command, you can see it lists all the devices that we have that are ButterFS. And so um, we can see we have SDD, SDB, label data, label data. And you'll see that these UUIDs are the same for both of those. So it's not unique for the disks, it's unique for the partition that we've created, the, the array. Um, and so we need to copy that, um, that string there because we're gonna use it with our next um, command. Um, you can see this is also the, um, the boot partition here um, from my file, from my operating system. So the next thing we need to do, and this is where um, you really need to be careful. Um, I'm using micro, that's my text editor of choice, but obviously um, you can use nano, vim, emacs, whatever the case is, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, but me personally, I love micro, so um, maybe I'll do a video on that sometime, but we need to edit our um, Etsy um, fstab file. And so what this file is, is it gives us um, the, the configuration on the drives that we are going to automatically mount um, on boot. And so like I said before, if you screw up this file, you really can mess up your um, operating system, uh, its capability to boot. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to paste that UUID um, so I don't lose it in here. And then we're gonna copy this, um, this line right here. And so what this line is, is basically um, this is how we mount our um, array automatically to the data um, mount point. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to copy this. Um, actually, I'm gonna cut it. And you come in here and you see how I've got the um, this variable for RAID UUID. So you just uh, delete that part and you put in that um, ID number there. And so what this line is telling us is um, this device, this UUID, we want to mount that onto data and it is a ButterFS um, file system and we want to use the default configuration options on mounting that. And so that's all you have to do. So let's save that and quit out of that. Now, in order for us to test this, um, we need to reboot the system. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot real quick. Um, just by clicking or typing in sudo reboot. Um, and that will reboot our machine. And I'll be right back as soon as the machine reboots. All right, I'm back. The machine is rebooted. Um, and you can see I've got an uptime of 43 seconds here. Um, so let's go ahead and we're gonna copy this command. And so what this is going to do is it's going to give us the information about slash data. And so you can see here, it's um, the file system is SDB, um, 2.8 terabytes, and it's mounted to data. So we've been able to create um, our RAID 1 array um, and through the FSTAB automatically mount that onto our file system um, into the slash data mount point. And so um, if we go ahead and let me clear this out, if we do a um, list on our root directory, we can see here's our data folder here. Now here's the problem that we have right here. Now, if you're always gonna be root, it's not an issue. But for me personally, I'm logged into my John account. And so um, unless I wanna do sudo on every single move and copy and whatever, putting data on there, 
I'm always going to run into problems by having that owned by root. And so the last thing that we do here is we have this um, ch own, so change owner um, command. And so when we put this command in there, what we're doing is we're changing the owner um, recursively. So this is everything in that directory down, um, even though there's nothing in there, just doing it for safety reasons. So, and we're changing it to the user of John, myself, and to the group of John, also my the group that I'm primarily associated with, and the folder um, or directory that we're doing it for. So when we do that, now we're gonna have to enter our pseudo password. And now if we do another um, list of root, you can see now that that um, folder is now owned by me. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out. Now that we have everything set up, let's go ahead and copy some files to our new um, directory. So let's use the cp command and let's use um, vr and I am going to copy some stuff out of, um, I have a downloads um, folder. So let's see here, downloads. And then there's an ISO directory in there. And so we are gonna copy that to slash data slash ISO. And so what this is going to do, this command is just gonna copy everything in these folders um, recursively and it's gonna show us the files that it's gonna copy over to that directory. So let's go ahead and start that up. And you can see that it copied two files um, over there or it's continuing to copy, there we go, it finally finished. Um, and so now if we do a, a list on those uh, on that directory, we can see that we now have that ISO um, folder in there. And so anyways, that was a quick tutorial on how to create a RAID 1 array um, using ButterFS. Um, and I am by no means an expert in this. I've, you know, I'm figuring, I'm trying to figure it out like everybody else. Um, but I just figured that if I, um, as I learn these things, I can hopefully share it with somebody else and they can be able to get past any roadblocks that they may have that I've been able to overcome. So anyways, hope that helps you guys and I will talk to you later.